What follows are some clips of an interview I did with Jilly Edwards for my online course, Design Solutions for the Artist Weaver Season 2, about her tapestry design process. Jilly works in woven tapestry. These clips are directly related to her newly released book, Yellows and Pinks. At the end of the video, I give you a brief glimpse of the inside of the book. Today, I'm delighted to introduce you to Jilly Edwards. She is a tapestry artist who currently works in Bristol, UK. Jilly trained at the University of the West of England and then at the Edinburgh College of Art. She's been working as a professional tapestry artist for more than 50 years now. Her long career is full of much deserved accolades, residencies, publications, teaching positions, solo and group shows, and many private and public commissions. I'm fascinated by th this set of slides also. Yes, this was just before lockdown came, um, back in October, November uh, 2019. Again, I'd done two big commissions um, in 2018, 2019 for uh, Newnham College at Cambridge University, um, which was wonderful to do absolutely marvelous but you know it drains you doing that they were again big pieces of work um, uh, lots of designs to do first and then go so again I, I came and I, I did a piece which is now going for hopefully selection for an exhibition but then what you know whoa you come against this brick wall and you're thinking gosh what do I do and I wanted to draw and my studio really isn't big and I don't have a drawing wall. Mm. Um, and so not far from here, it's about 40 minute train journey um, with a change of trains. Uh, it's a place called the Drawing Project UK. Uh, uh, a woman who is now Dean of Duncan of Jordanston Art School, which is in Dundee. And she lives here, down in the Southwest, so mm. not, not very close. Um, but she decided to set up this drawing project where she's a drawer. That's what she does for her living, um, apart from being a dean and a curator and all sorts of other things. She's an amazing woman, uh, Anita Taylor. She's called Professor Anita Taylor. Um, and they have studios that you can rent. And so I uh, talked to her and said, I really, need somewhere and she said well come here you know and she took me around the studios that were empty and several of them had lots of windows looking out and I said well I don't want windows you know, she said, why don't you want windows and I said well I don't I'll be distracted I need I need four white walls so she oh yeah we've got one of those it's got roof lights oh perfect you know yes please I'll have that one um and I have rolls of big paper that I can take but again you know the scary bit about white sheets of paper vast scale you know five foot by eight foot um, and uh, there's a company here in Britain called Toast and they make clothes for women and uh, homeware as well it's very nicely sourced interesting great people they've got a great ethos um, and they support artists and um, art makers, all sorts of ceramics. Um, but they have these wonderful paint, uh, photographs on the walls of their shops. And I'd been using their, they have a, a sort of newsletter which goes out, which is really lovely. On the back are illustrations of their latest that season's wear. Mm -hmm. But on the front is one beautiful photograph sometimes only a part of a dress or a pair of shoes and, and a bit of landscape in it. And I've been using those in my sketchbook, cutting them up and again, drawing sort of on top of them. Um, and one day I was in there and I said, what, what do you do with your big, big photographs? And she said, well, we just chuck them out when next seasons come in. And I went, do you have any old ones? And I explained what I was going to do. And I was going to the drawing project for five weeks and it would give me a not white sheet of paper to start on. 
So I got huge rolls of these beautiful paintings. You know, this is the girl with a hat and a dress. And I sort of didn't want them to, to show, you know, I, I don't want the girl in there. But if you click, you can see her gradually disappear. I just put them up, you know, you can see I'm starting to put my yellow in, I've put white, there are black areas. And it, you keep going and you, you'll start to see, you know, she's gone altogether, huh. you know, but she's still there, you know, and um, the sketchbooks, you know, these have got little pages of the, you can see that there are things underneath, but um, difficult for you to see, but more just sort of simple lines, but it gave, some of the days were very dark, you know, <laughs> troubled, you know, you sort of do these things and you don't always have light at, at the end of the day. Um, and I just put them up on the wall and then gradually as I finished working on them, I would put up a new sheet of paper from the roll. And it meant that there would still be some that I could still work on with the figures in or the landscape, but then I would translate what I was finding or just covering up and I could take it to the white sheets and put them onto the white sheets without the drawing underneath. So it was just a way of, of mm -hmm. getting into it. And for five weeks, I went every day. Um, we have a little station at the end of our road. You know, I got the half past nine train, got there half past 10, worked all day, didn't have the restrictions of being in my own studio and feeling I ought to be weaving because that's what I am. And here's a pink wall of drawings. I've seen a few of these um, with the pink on your Instagram. So yeah. is that, that would be another place people could look at what goes on in your tapestry, I think, right? It is, yes. I think, you know, this is one of the most exciting things, though, about talking to you and just looking at your work is this whole idea that the ideas keep coming. You just keep working. I know. I'm, I'm stunned by that. You know, you sort of think, oh, I didn't think I'd still be doing it. I don't know what I thought I'd be doing. You know, I, I sort of knew I liked doing it. But, you know, it's a long time now, you know, and I'm very fortunate. You know, it's it's. It is a great life. You know, I'm not going to say it's been a great life because it has been, but that sounds like it's not going to keep going. Well, as long as I can crawl down the stairs and hoist myself on my IKEA stool, I will do it, you know. Oh, Rebecca, we've taken on the world, haven't you? You'll be time for lunch. <laughs>